Welcome everybody to this discussion on critical materials sustainability. My name is Anthony Diorsi. I'm the research manager at Cleantech Group. And joining me here today is Nari Jamvelian, an investor at Voyager Ventures. Welcome, Nari. Thanks for having me. Nari, it would be great to have an intro to yourself and sure. to Voyager Ventures as well. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Nari. I'm an investor with Voyager Ventures. We are a climate tech fund, so we invest across technologies that are decarbonizing our economy and the uh, environments all around us. My personal background is in science, so I have a PhD from Harvard in chemical physics. I studied metal-based nanomaterials for sustainable chemical production. And then I moved into the management consulting world after so that I could work on a broader set of problems and work in industry. I was there for about four years working with a lot of the software and tech clients based in the Bay Area, um, working on the revenue side. So growth strategy, helping with pricing, strategy sales, helping launch new products. Really enjoyed it. Um, had a couple climate clients and that's where my heart was. So I wanted to focus only on climate. So I joined the Voyager team and now I get to work with early stage startups and help them bring new technologies to commercial scale. Science PhD from Harvard, you must just be guessing your way through all of these diligences. <laughs> uh, something I'd really like to hear from you is your hypothesis in these coming years on critical materials. Mm -hmm. I know we at Cleantech Group feel like this is going to be a field of growth. Yep. There's a lot more of a crunch in the supply chains. There's more concerns over import of critical materials, some efforts to onshore. We'd love okay. to hear your perspective on the macro and then maybe also the micro on where some corporates might be looking to adopt the onshore materials. That's right. So um, from the macro level, you hit the main points already, right? Um, we're seeing that onshoring for domestic production. That's generally a consequence of having seen what happened when um, other countries were impacted by the supply chains and then we couldn't get certain minerals here. So whether that was the war in Ukraine or China uh, inflating prices, it had a really big impact on our supply chains here in the U.S. and we learned those lessons. So there's that wave to bring production here and um, have our domestic um, supplies secured. There's also a wave from our policy um, supporting these these trends. So mm -hmm. there's uh, policies from the IRA that have uh, been implemented to support critical minerals. And we also know from a domestic production, um, DOE has mapped it out on what materials we know are going to be in uh, critical supply gaps. So mm -hmm. we know what's up and coming. We know where to focus on. So there's um, a lot of tailwinds there. Mm -hmm. And what might be, for the audience's benefit, some of the materials that are going to be most needed in the next few years? Absolutely. So right now, uh, there's a lot of focus on the rare earth elements. So these are used mostly for magnets. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, uh, precious metals, so platinum, palladium group metals. Mm -hmm. um, there's also materials that are going into batteries are going to be a really big area. So nickel, copper, cobalt, um, as well as graphite, absolutely mm -hmm. necessary. That's uh, very critical. And in the long term, we'll see other um, other materials also in need. So uh, magnesium mm -hmm. that in the long term, as well as silicon, silicon carbide, which are absolutely essential for the semiconductors and data centers, which are another huge um, wave that's happening right now. Yeah, we've spent a lot of time this week already talking about that, and I'm yeah. sure we're going to hear more. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about Voyager's portfolio and where you've already engaged and backed some critical materials innovators? Absolutely. So our portfolio, we we focus on finding bets across the whole supply chain. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the, our investments are in Atlas Materials. That's mm -hmm. nickel production. So domestic nickel production, they use an electrified approach from mm -hmm. sap saponite ores. Um, and produce nickel as well as magnesium, mm -hmm. um, magnesium hydroxide for batteries. So that's one area um, pretty downstream in the, in the supply chain. Another one is Alta. So yes. Alta does rare earth yeah. element separations. Um, they use immobilized proteins and are very specific to selecting the rare earth elements. Mm -hmm. um, what's really great about Alta is it's tunable and very specific. So they can adjust the proteins on those binding sites to target different metals. So they'll be able to move out of the earth metals and go across the, the periodic table to other metals. So I personally love platform approaches. So that, yeah. that's why I like um, Alta. They're also very stable proteins. So you can cycle them about a thousand times without seeing degradation. Um, highly selective, high conver um, conversions and um, super super fast contact time. So it goes very quickly, very scalable, and all of this leads to lower costs. Mm -hmm. 
So as a thesis as a whole, I should have mentioned this up front, is we're looking for technologies that are faster, better, and cheaper. Yeah. We're, we're not impact investors. We're looking for technologies that will stand the test of time. So that's the underpinning between for all of these two. Um, we have another portfolio company, Apnis. Yep. Um, they're producing lithium hydroxides uh, for batteries, and their feedstocks are uh, mining ore waste. Mm -hmm. So lithium sulfates, lithium chlorides, and uh, using electrolyzers to produce lithium hydroxide. So it's a little further along the supply chain as well. And then if we go even further down to down the supply chain, even to end materials, mm -hmm. so end products, uh, we have a company in Stealth that is making small motors and mm -hmm. uh, powertrains without the use of rare earth elements. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of even cutting out, out of the supply yeah. chain. So, yeah. So you're taking really a systems-based approach to this, yeah. right? You're seeing where you can circumvent the use of rare earths in the motors, but where rare earths are still needed. Yeah. You're trying to access them faster, cheaper, and in a more sustainable way. Exactly. Was this part of the strategy in that you wanted to find technologies that might be complementary to each other somewhere in the supply chain? Um, I think generally it's looking for markets that are very large and technologies mm -hmm. that are going to beat what is out there right now. Yes. So that faster, better, cheaper. Um, we're not necessarily looking for technologies that are complementing each other within our mm -hmm. portfolio, but I think naturally as we build the portfolio and grow, go across the supply chain, we are building, um, we are building a portfolio that naturally complements each other, whether it's early later into the midstream of the, the supply chain and then all the way to the end products. Okay, great. Good. Let's talk about some of the markets that stand to be most impacted by critical materials innovation. Which are those today? And might that evolve? Are there going to be new markets that are going to need this technology and these minerals in yeah. the next few years? Absolutely. So the big market that's going to be impacted by critical minerals are the EV battery sectors. Course, that's yeah. the major one where a lot of the pull is happening. But critical minerals, especially rare earths, are used in a wide range of materials, mm -hmm. um, wind turbines, yeah. that's another area, um, as well as other renewables. Um, other areas that are more up and coming, the defense industry, mm -hmm. so drones, fighter jets, um, other wiring systems. Um, another area would be aerospace as well, mm -hmm. um, the engines, of course, yeah. and need a lot of critical minerals. And then outside of that, there's also the healthcare industry, so mm -hmm. MRI machines use a lot of rare earths. Um, and in consumer electronics. So the LED displays for TVs, for phones, they use a lot of critical minerals, mm -hmm. the batteries that go into them. So there's a really wide reaching range that these critical mm -hmm. minerals are used for. It's really across economy. Across everything, yeah. every, life as we know it. Yeah. yeah, runs on electricity and critical materials. So we talked a little bit about the need for critical materials in the defense industry. I know we at Cleantech Group, when we track some of the innovators here, a commonality is partnerships with the Department of Defense or with branches of the military. Can you help us understand a little bit of the motivation there? Yeah. So what the defense industry is looking for is having domestic supply. So in case there's a disruption, mm -hmm. that we don't need to worry about where we're getting these um, supplies, minerals, everything that's going to be required to make these larger products, um, equipment, and so forth. So they're looking to shore up and have a steady stream of supply for uh, critical minerals going into drones. Mm -hmm. um, these are for the batteries that go into running the drones um, for the fighter jets, whether that's for the body of the fighter jets um, or the engines themselves. And also what the defense industry is looking for to be self-sustaining even on a, a base themselves. Sure. So they're also looking for energy supply. Um, so it might be onshore generation um, of, of energy at the base mm -hmm. or fuel production, uh, distributed fuel production so that they are self-sustaining. Um, so that's what they're looking for. And that's driving a lot of interest, uh, for example, in our um, portfolio company, Alta. Yes. They got a DARPA grant. Mm -hmm. um, so that there's support there. There's also interest in our other portfolio company, Cash Energy, mm -hmm. which supplies, um, it's a thermal energy, uh, energy storage solution. So it can self-sustain certain villages or bases mm -hmm. and so forth. Excellent. So it sounds like it's a lot of an independence and maybe site or base independence argument exactly. here. Exactly. Excellent. Well, thank you for adding more color to that. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us for this discussion here today. Thank you.